Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of Subscriber Appreciation Week. Yeah, so yesterday I didn't have an intro for it, but you know what? Um, that's fine, because we got an intro for it today. Yesterday I couldn't find the comment that was asking for the introduction, so um, that's why I guess I didn't do it. Also, I was pressed for time, so I just wanted to do it as quickly as possible. So yeah, you know what? Sometimes, you know, quality suffers for uh, authenticity, and that's what I'm into here. So, okay, guess what? We are over halfway through. That means that there are two more videos for Subscriber Appreciation Week. And then I'm going to have a little, um, maybe like after, well, nah, that's actually not true. So after Subscriber Appreciation Week, um, I am going to do the 750 subscriber special video slowly, probably, unfortunately. Um, I didn't expect for it to uh, grow this long. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support on this. Um, yeah, so today uh, I made a Vardenfell uh, tour guide video and I tried to make it like as cheesy tour video as possible. I was thinking like old style, like visit, blah, 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 wherever. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And um, I hope to see you again tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to do something that I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy, honestly. Um, tomorrow is going to be Tamriel Rebelt. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. I hope you like it. Three blessings, Sarah, and welcome to Vardenfell. You probably already know this, but there's a little something for everyone here, whether you're a merchant, an adventurer, mercenary, or a pilgrim. I'm about to give you a wide range of options as we go on a tour through some of the most beautiful, breathtaking, bustling, and kind of brash locations, sure to intrigue and excite just about anyone. The first place on our list is the small, godless town of Saran. A silt strider is the best way to get here, and just as you exit the strider platform, you'll be immediately aware of what kind of place you're dealing with here. Located in the breathtaking Escadian Isles, Saran sits on the eastern coast of Lake Mosobi and is controlled by the seedy, um, I mean, uh, enterprising House Lalu. You might not know this, but Saran used to be looked over by House Rhetoran, but in the late Third Era, House Lalu noticed Saran's ideal placement as a slaving headquarters and decided to set up shop. Now, because Saran is such a soulless place, it is by that nature a wondrous place for all manners of thieves, rogues, skooma eaters, and otherwise. There's certainly no loss of morality in stealing from slavers, after all. There are a surprising amount of shops here with impressive stock to haggle for or emancipate and quite a few interesting individuals. However, Saran made its way onto this travel guide mostly for one reason alone. Dazelle's House of Earthly Delights is a must-see for all travelers and hedonists. Dazelle houses the best entertainers on the island, just don't get too close to the dancers. Or the guests. There are plenty of instruments to jam on if the sugar hits just right, and you can pick the upstairs lock to sleep in a beautiful bed if you need a little rest. It is highly recommended for all adventurers to pack a little extra cash so that they're able to tip the dancers and their bartenders accordingly. And for those of us who use sugar, I would bring my own. Seeing as how I wouldn't trust sugar that's just lying on the table like this, you know what I mean? Regardless, all adventurers from any walk of life could poke their nose around Saran and find something that strikes their fancy. Not far from Saran, the next place on our list is the sprawling and impressive city of Vivek. Try to leave your feelings about the demigod at the bridge, because this city may be in and of his name, but this is a place of the people, of all people. The mega city of Vivek houses nine separate cantons, all each dominated by their own sphere of influence, and each canton contains roughly four different areas to explore. 
Adventurers of all kinds will be able to find training, odd jobs, rare items, and community here in the metropolis, and there is quick and cheap travel between the cantons by gondola if walking becomes too fatiguing or daunting. The foreign quarter is likely the first place any adventurer will start getting lost in. With over 20 merchants to barter with in this canton alone, you're sure to find whatever you might be looking for, and maybe a couple of things you didn't know you needed. I could talk about Vivek forever, so really I advise you to explore it deeply yourself. However, there are a few places I think everyone should check out at some point in their journey. Specifically, the Arena Canton. This is probably the delight of many people. Uh, as they used to say, bread and circus. There is tons of great training in this canton. And also, try to check out the basement if you're a fledgling assassin or follower of Mafala. The Library of Vivek has tons of books to read. So if you're an adventurer or pilgrim who is more interested in the literary arts, I would strongly suggest checking out the library. Close by the library, there is actually a free apartment that you can live in at St. Delin Canal South 2. The owner seems to have fallen on some hard times. However, there is a bed available here if you don't wish to pay for room fees. And before leaving St. Delin, don't forget to check out Sheogareth's Shrine in the Canal Works. You will not regret your decision. Now the next few locations are for more of the seasoned adventurer. So pack your potions and get your best gear on because we're going to go out into the wild. We've spent a lot of time exploring the Escadian Isles, but there's just one more place that we have to visit before we leave. Mudan Grotto is a strange little place located slightly southwest of Ebenhart. You can either swim or use water walking potions to get over here. At first, it may seem like an unassuming grotto. However, if you explore a little more deep you will eventually stumble upon an ancient Dwemer stronghold sunken under the sea. The noises in here are a little difficult to get used to, so I highly suggest bringing some Kwama Cuddle earplugs. However, I think you will find that this is one of the more fun Dwemer ruins to explore if you're into that kind of thing. Argonians can ignore this message, but be sure to pack plenty of water breathing potions so you don't end up like the Dwemer down here in Mudan. So after that delightful warm up in Mudan, I think it is time that we paid a visit to one of the most beautiful regions of Vardenfell, Azura's Coast. The next stop on our tour will be Azura's Shrine. Located just south of Holomayan, and west of Ordinaren, Azura Shrine is one of the most beautiful locations on the map. Don't be swayed by the amount of monsters that you might run into on your way over to her shrine because it's really going to be worth it in the end. It is highly recommended that adventurers visit the shrine during Azura's time of twilight. This time not only ensures Azura's blessing, but it will also give you the full visual effect of the sunrise or sunset glinting off of the statue. Inside here, travelers who are followers of Azura can get a quest from her, or they can just simply bask in the glory that is her majestic statue located in the center of the shrine. Continuing our travel up and along the coast, eventually we will stumble into one of the best landscapes on Vardenfell, the Grazelands. The Grazelands is overflowing with plants and animals ripe for hunting and gathering, and the weather stays relatively calm and clear here, making travel relatively simple. It's a great place to pitch a tent and take in the beauty of the great outdoors, but please try not to upset any of the local Ashlander tribes. You are a guest at their home here. Most travel here will be done on the ground, by that I mean outside of caves and ruins, but there are a couple places of historical note here for the more bookish adventurers. That is, unless of course, you're a fan of looting ancestral tombs, there are certainly many of those littered here. The Dwemer Ruin of Nichuleft, as in the book Chronicles of Nichuleft, is here. There isn't much to be looted, but it still stands as an important vestige of Dwemer history. Adventurers are advised to forge their own paths in the Grazelands. Let us know what you find. Now, 
Let's continue our journey and take a little trip north to the region of Shiograd. You'll likely want to take boat transport from Vaz to get up to Dagenfell as we make our way to our two destinations up here. There is much to explore, ruins, shipwrecks, everything, but we are looking for two main landmarks. First, we'll stop by the old ruins of Ald Redania. Ald Redania was discovered in the middle Marethic era when Aldmer explorers had mapped out the coasts of Vardenfell and established wizard towers all along those coasts. At some point, a very powerful war wizard lived on the top level of Ald Redania, and you can find him there now. His undead skeleton is still protecting the Bitter Cup as well as an ancient Tamrielic artifact called the Vampiric Ring. Experienced adventurers who are willing to fight hordes of undead have the potential to either drink from the bitter cup or to just pocket it and walk away. Finishing up our quest to Aldredania, we will head north over the water to a place called Big Head's Shack. Shiogareth followers may know this location already, and I suggest if you don't, you commit this unassuming shack to memory. This eccentric Argonian holds one of the most interesting weapons in the game. Now, we've explored quite a lot of territory here, however, we should really end our travels in a strange little place, which can also serve as your exit point. Southwest of Kool is a Daedric shrine named Ashal Mawia, and this location proves very useful to many types of adventurers. There are a few quests that bring you here, lots of loot, and a very rare book inside. I highly advise adventurers to take a look. This has been a quick tour of many of the places you should visit in Vardenfell. This is, of course, not a definitive list, and of course, there are so many great spots, but I hope you've enjoyed your journey today. If you're interested in checking out more of Vardenfell, please consider hiring the LB Tour Services LLC to take your tour to the next level. And if you're interested in more isolated areas, please consider checking out the playlists tab on this current channel's page and seek out the skillbooks guide. In that guide, we go on plenty of adventures all throughout Vardenfell, and we discover a lot of new things. Thank you so much for joining us on our first ever Vardenfell tour, and don't forget to book a tour guide for your next journey through Vardenfell. See you soon. Mm -hmm.